for my first ceramics class, I remember looking at the glaze table and all the glaze tests and just think to myself, I can make that? With glazing, I loved the fact that you would put something in the kiln and the fire and it would transform and turn into something else. And that's one of the greatest things about ceramics is there is this element of surprise. Amazing color, amazing texture, things happening in the kiln that were surprises. You may want something, but what you get is oftentimes different for better or worse. But when it's better, it's there's nothing like it because it's, it's ineffable. Making color with glaze, it's very different than making color with pigments and paints because pigments are as they look when they're applied to canvas, whereas making color from glaze, you're making color from chemistry. So you have all these raw materials that will create other colors once they're fired into a glaze, but raw, they just look like gray or like a light pinkish color. They represent nowhere near what they would look at the end of the firing. They're very finicky to work with. They have an oversaturation of zinc oxide in them, which causes crystallization if the pieces are cooled slowly enough at the end of the firing. So there's textural quality, that patterning quality, that color differential that I love. And all the colors come from adding different metal oxides to these zinc-based glazes. So there's copper, cobalt, silver, tin, iron. The glazes run quite a bit, so on most glazes I'll apply numerous glazes down the pot and let one glaze melt into another. So one color melting into another creates all these other color gradations on the same piece. It's a bit of a challenge because you're always envisioning certain results and striving for certain results without actually seeing them, which is one of the joys of glaze work because there's this element for things to happen that you can't entirely control how much crystallization occurs, where the crystallization occurs. So they're not flaws per se, but there are things that are happening. And sometimes when the glaze doesn't work textbook perfect, it's more interesting than when it does. And that's really where the beauty lies. Getting good results with these glazes, I started working with the forms and thinking of good forms for these glazes to work on, which seems easy, but simple doesn't equate easy. <laughs> And so over the course of years, I started really refining my throwing techniques and really considering the forms that I wanted these glazes to be put upon. So the, the glazes and the forms really developed together over a period of years. Now when I sit down to throw a piece, I know basically what I'm shooting for, but it's, it's nice to have that element of seeing where it goes. You have a certain idea with the clay, but it will dictate something else to you and reveal something else to you as you're throwing it. So it's nice to have that freedom to work with the clay and not force it into being one thing if it wants to be something else. There's almost a, an improvisational quality to some of the pieces. You know, I love form and the narrower the opening, the more defined the form is. And also I like the technical challenge of seeing how far I can push the clay and work with it. So that would create very narrow bases with rounded forms, rounded forms with very narrow openings, narrow openings that are really tall and elongated. There's just a real joy and challenge of pushing the clay as far as it can go and just seeing what it can do and how it can express itself. I like to impart a sense of grace with form and create very simple lines um, just to create this, this almost poetic effect with the form.